understand why everyone continued to make a fuss. Sure, he had achieved plenty and had ambitions to achieve more, but wanted to do so in his way, in his time, and without the world taking an active part. It's been a bit hard though at times where uh, people have invaded your privacy in the past where uh, they've been obviously told you've got to get Tony Lockett on, on an interview uh, and the, they have invaded your privacy. Yeah, it is a little bit hard, but I think now I can respect the media's, uh, their job too. I mean, they've got a very hard job and, I, and uh, you know, if that's what they have to do, well, they have to do that and, you know, I respect th their attitude to that now too, so I guess now I'm a lot more easier to get along with than what I was in the first few years, but, um, you know, it does... Everyone, I think, is, uh, should be allowed a, a certain amount of privacy and, you know, it gets, it gets a little bit hard. Sometimes you don't feel like doing an interview or whatever and, you know, you get people pressuring you. It, it just makes it a little bit hard at times. So, into 1988, Lockett went with expectations, his own and those of the public, extremely high. But 1988 was to be the beginning of three years of controversy and disappointment. While the previous year had been one of a series of firsts, so too was 1988, but all for the wrong reasons. Lockett became the first player to be reported by an emergency umpire when he was booked for striking Fitzroy's Grant Laurie. Emergency umpires only given the right to report during the pre-season of 1988. While Lockett achieved his greatest moment against Footscray, kicking his 100th goal the previous year, it was the return match against the Bulldogs in 1988 that Lockett's world suddenly caved in. For the ankle injury against uh, Footscray, when you flew for that mark, Rick Kennedy sort of was underneath you. Did you know straight away when you landed that that was it? Well, no, not straight away. I tried to get up and, uh, you know, after, I thought I just sort of sprained it pretty badly. And just after a couple of minutes when I still couldn't put my foot on the ground, well, then I realised there must have been something a little bit worse than a sprain. The reigning Brownlow medalist looked set to miss the rest of the season. It was big news and everyone wanted to know how he was. The St Kilda Football Club told Channel 10 and Channel 7 when and where Lockett would be arriving.